Hey everyone, I just wanna share for a few minutes a little word of encouragement for you as we find ourselves in this quarantine season. Now I know for many of you out there, this quarantine season maybe isn't what you expected it to be. Obviously none of us expected this to happen, but maybe what you thought is that you would have more time on your hands and maybe right now you're in the thick of homeschooling, many kids, something you never thought you'd find yourself doing. For some of you, you may even think have been feeling more sleepy or lethargic in this season and feel like you have too much time on your hands and it's hard to get motivated to do much. And so I wanna just to encourage you all to just make sure that we don't go through this season and miss what Jesus has for us in this season and miss what he wants to teach us. So I wanna share with you about Mary of Bethany and I wanna encourage us all to find a way to have a heart like Mary of Bethany. Now, most of you know Mary of Bethany from the story of Mary and Martha. And this is a really well talked about story. And I would assume when we all think about this story that we think we would have been like Mary in the story. You know, Mary and Martha were actually the sisters of Lazarus who Jesus um, raised from the dead. But the first time that we see Jesus with Mary and Martha and Lazarus, he comes to their home and they come in their home and we know the story. Mary sits at Jesus' feet and Martha's busy in the kitchen getting things done. And Jesus says to Mary that she has chosen the better way. Well, I wanna share a couple of things with you about this story to kind of expand maybe what your thoughts are about it. Because I believe that though many of us think that we would have been Mary in the situation, most of us actually would have been Martha. And I think most of us actually are Martha's right now. You know, we find our quiet time of 30 minutes in the morning, we check the box and we think that we're like Mary of Bethany when really we're not. So the difference between Mary and Martha is this. When Jesus came into their home, what was different about Mary is that she saw something different in Jesus. So during the time of Jesus, Jewish men actually believed that it would have been better to burn the Torah than to have taught women. And also, Jewish men were not allowed to greet women, even on the street, even if it was their sister or their wives, they weren't allowed to greet them or look them in the eye. So when Jesus came into their home, something different happened with his interaction with Mary. Mary would have been a woman that was used to not being looked at as a woman. She would have been used to men not talking to her, not acknowledging her, not being able to be brought in to be taught with the men. And so I want you to imagine this. You're there with Mary and Martha in their home and Jesus comes in. I picture Mary at the door greeting Jesus. And I think that Jesus looked at her and he looked at her different than any other man she knew had, would ever look at her. First of all, he looked at her. I think he looked her in the eye and I think she, he may even have said her name, Mary. And I think in that moment, she knew that he was the true Messiah because he saw in her something different. She felt completely seen. She felt completely known. She probably saw the eyes of her heavenly father through Jesus. Hebrews 1, 3 says that Jesus is the exact representation of the father. And I think she felt completely known, completely seen. And she knew that he was Jesus, unlike any feeling she'd ever had before. And so he comes in and he's sitting down. And I think that Mary knew that that place was hers. Even amongst all the men, can you imagine all the men there? Mary is, is not even allowed technically in any, in this culture to, to go amongst the men, to listen, let alone to sit at his feet. So what happens is this, it says that Martha was distracted with much serving. This is from Luke chapter 10, verse 40. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Now, Jesus is saying Mary has chosen the better option. Even in a culture where women weren't allowed to, be, to, to sit amongst the men and be taught, and she was at his feet. Now, to sit at a rabbi's um, feet, which is what Jesus was, he was a teacher, was actually the highest position of honor that a student could have. Mary was sitting in the most honored position that 
someone could have been in that never would have belonged to a woman. But she knew because of the way Jesus looked at her when he came in the door, she knew that that spot belonged to her because he saw her. He saw who she was. She saw her creator's eyes through him. And she said, that spot belongs to me. So I want to tell you something that it's not just what we can fit in in our time. It's knowing that that place for us is a place of honor and that place for us is a privilege that we get to sit at his feet. It's a privilege that we get to know that he wants us there and that we're known by him. So I encourage you all to sit at his feet, to just picture what it would have been like to be in Mary's position, to see Jesus walk in, to say your name and to be completely known to him, to know that that place before his feet is a place of honor and it's a place of privilege that he gives to us to sit before him. So don't use the excuse that I think we often do of his grace when we're busy. We know that his grace covers us even when we're busy, but don't let that be an excuse to not look at his face. Don't do that because that is making up excuses for not being able to do that when we're busy. We can be busy, but have hearts like Mary that long for him and that know what it's like to behold and gaze upon the face. When you're going about your day, set your heart before him and long for him and ask him to teach you and to be known and to be loved by him. And he will find ways to do that even in your busy time. And he will wake you up out of the slumber that you're in if you feel like you're stuck. So be encouraged, go to him, seek him, and look upon his face during this time.